All right, this is um, chapter eight, review C. It's all mixed up. So let's talk about our equations again. Our arithmetic equations are for the sequence a n equals a one plus n minus one times d. And for the series, s n equals n over two a one plus a n. And our geometric, our sequence is a n equals a one times r to the n minus one. Our first sum equation is s n um, equals a one times one minus r to the n over one minus r. Our second one is if I don't have n, but I know a n, a one minus a n times r over one. And our infinite geometric series, if the absolute value of r is greater than one, there is no sum. But if the absolute value of r is less than one, the sum is a one over one minus r. So the first one, find a20 if a12 n is 31 and d is 3. When it tells you d, you're looking with at an arithmetic sequence. We're going to plug in the information we know and find a1. So a12 is 31. 31 is the a n uh, equals a1 plus n, which is 12, minus 1 times 3. 31 equals a1 plus 11 times 3 is 33, minus the 33, a1 is negative 2. And then I can plug that back in. A, a 20 is what I'm looking for, is negative 2 plus 20 minus 1 times 3. That's negative 2 plus 19 times 3. Negative 2 plus 57 is 55. Number two, find the sum of the seventh term, seventh terms, seven terms of the geometric series. So really it means we want to find the sum of the first seven terms of the series. So it gives us an n is equal to seven. My a1 is three. And my r, if I don't know, I can divide a2, one, divided by three. So it's one third. And I'm going to plug it into my sum formula, sn equals a1 times 1 minus 1 third to the seventh over 1 minus 1 third. And that's 3 times 1 minus 1 over 2187 divided by 2 thirds. So when I do that, remember we're keeping things in fractions. So it's 1 to the seventh and 3 to the seventh. And that's where I get the 2187. And 1 minus 2187. Well, 1 is 2187 over 2187. And when I subtract 1 over 2187, we get 2186 over 2187 times the 3 divided by the 2 thirds. And we know that 3 goes into 2187 729 times. We know that 3 goes into 2187 because 2187 was 3 to the 7th power. And so I have 2186 over 729 times the reciprocal 3 over 2. And then we're going to go 3 goes into 729 again 243 times. And 2 goes into 2186 1093 times. So my final answer is 1093 over 243. So remember with the cross dividing, right? Just like we did in chapter seven, we were canceling out common factors. Three is a common factor of 729, so I can divide 729 by the three. Number three says find the sum of one, negative one half, plus one fourth minus dot, dot, dot. When we have the dot, 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 and nothing on the end, then, we have an infinite series. So because this is infinite, we need to find r. r is negative 1 half divided by 1, which is negative 1 half. 
the absolute value of negative one half is less than one. Therefore, there will be a sum, so I can plug it in. One divided by one minus negative one half. And that's one divided by, keep change, change. One plus one half is three halves, right? Two halves plus one half is three halves. And to divide fractions, we multiply the reciprocal by the reciprocal of the denominator. So one times two thirds, which is two thirds. So the sum is equal to two thirds. Number four also gives us that dot, dot, dot with nothing on the end, which is also infinite. My r is gonna be five over six, second term divided by the first term, a2 divided by a1, and that is less than one, therefore there will be a sum. So my calculation, my r is five sixths and my a1 is six. So s equals a1 over one minus r, so that's six divided by one minus five sixths, which is six divided by one sixth. Six times six is 36. We multiply by the reciprocal. And number five. Number five, the r is negative four divided by negative two, which is a positive two. Two is greater than one. And so this problem has no sum because it's gonna continually get larger, and when we infinitely get larger, we don't get a finite sum. And number six, after one month at a new job, you have, save, uh, you have saved $50. That's your A1. So six, we'll do it over here. Your A1 is 50. You decide to save $5 more each month. So you're gonna add $5 every month, so that's a common difference what you're adding every month. Write an equation that models how much you save each month. So a n is equal to a 1, 50, plus n minus 1 times 5. That's 50 plus 5 n minus 5. So 5 n plus 45 is the equation for how much you save each month. How much did you save on the seventh month? Asks us to plug in 7. 5 times 7 plus 45. A7 is 35 plus 45, which is 80. So on the seventh month, you saved $80. You had $80 saved. All right, number seven, find the next three terms for the geometric sequence four. Uh, 18, negative six, two, negative two thirds. The best thing I can do is take negative six divided by 18. I get negative one third when I reduce, that's my R. So negative two thirds times negative one third. My next term is going to be positive two ninths. So this is a five, one, two, three, four, yeah, that'll be the fifth. And then times by negative one third again, negative two over 27, that's a six times by negative one third, two over 81 is my A7. So my three terms are two ninths, negative two twenty-sevenths, and two over 81. Number eight, write the nth term equation for the geometric sequence. That's your AN equals A1 times R to the N minus one. The nice thing about this equation is it just asks us to plug it in. We don't have to do any simplifying. So a1 is negative three times one half to the n minus one. Next, identify either as an arithmetic, geometric, or neither. 25, 50, 75, 100. We're adding 25 every time, not multiplying by anything. So when the common difference, the pattern is adding, it's arithmetic. Number 10, write an nth equation of the geometric sequence, given a7 is 32 and a13 is 2048. So this is where we're gonna take our a n equals a1 r to the n minus one, and we're gonna write the two equations. 32 is my a n equals a1 times r to the seven minus one. That's 32 equals a1 times r to the sixth. And then we have 2048 equals a1 times r to the 13 minus one. 
2048 equals A1 times R to the 12th. Now I can solve the first equation for A1 by dividing by R to the 6th, and I choose the smaller exponent, so I get 32 over R to the 6th equals A1. Then I'm going to use substitution and plug it in to this equation, 2048 equals 32 over r to the 6th times r to the 12th. And the 6 r's cancel 6 of them, so we get r to the 6th. 2048 equals 32 r to the 6th. Divide by your 32. 2048 divided by 32 is 64. r to the 6th equals 64. And we'll take the sixth root. R is equal to plus or minus. The, square, the sixth root of 64 is 2. Now I know R. I can plug it back into my A1 equation. 32 over R. That's going to be 2 to the sixth, which is 32 over 64, 1 half. But I also have to plug in the negative 2. A1 is equal to 32 over negative 2 to the 6th, which is 32 over positive 64 again, 1 half. So I have two equations. I have different R's, but I have the same A1. An is equal to 1 half times 2 to the n minus 1, or, or and An is equal to 1 half times negative 2 to the n minus 1. Both equations are going to give us the same an, or a7 and a13. Um, okay, so those are your two answers. And the reason we have two answers is because when we take the sixth root, we have to do plus or minus when we do even roots. Number 11. Find the tenth term of the geometric sequence. So n equals 10. My r, 3 times what is 12, times what is 48, 4, so R is 4, and A1 is 3. Now we're asked for the 10th term, not the sum of the 10 terms, which I just found and had to erase, so we're going to make sure we find the right thing. 10th term means I'm using the A n equation, A1 times R to the n minus 1. So that's uh, 3 times 4 to the 10 minus 1, 3 times 4 to the 9th, that's 3 times 262, 144. Notice how I'm showing all my steps as I go, even though I'm using a calculator. We want to see this as well. It allows us to also decide whether you um, deserve partial credit for having the wrong answer because maybe it was just a keystroke error in the calculator or something else. So we want to see all of your steps done on the test. Number 12, find the 17th term. So n equals 17 of the sequence negative 8. A1 is negative 8. Negative 12 looks like d is negative 4. We're subtracting 4 repeatedly. So we have a17 equals negative 8 plus 17 minus 1 times negative 4. A1 plus n minus 1 times d. Don't forget that plus sign. I see a lot of you writing stuff on your papers and you forget the plus sign. So negative 8 plus 16 times negative 4 is negative 64. So negative 72 is my a17. All right, summation notation problems. We have to be able to identify our, our equations as arithmetic, geometric, or neither. I'm going to go through and do that and talk about that first and then we'll solve them. Number 13, 2n minus 1 is the rule. That's linear. There's no exponents, so this is arithmetic. Number 14, 4k divided by 3. I have a variable, and it's just multiplied by a number. There's no exponent, so this is also arithmetic. It's like 2x. 4 thirds k. Number 5, n squared. Whenever I have an n squared or a cubed or fourth power, those are neither. When I have exponentials, where the variable is an exponent, that's geometric for 16. Number 17, when I have just a number 
and 18, it is neither. There's no variable, so that makes it neither. So for the arithmetic, my sum equation is n over 2 times a1 plus a n. And so I need to plug in 2 to find my a1. So 2 times 2 minus 1, 4 minus 1 is 3. Plug in this top 6 to find my a n. 2 times 6 minus 1 is 12 minus 1, 11. And then n is 6 minus 2 plus 1. The top um, minus the bottom plus 1 because you have, you're going to start with 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 numbers, not 4. So 5 over 2, n over 2 times 3 plus 11, which is 5 over 2 times 14. 2 goes into 14 7 times, we get 35. Number 14, I'm going to do the same thing. Plug in 0 for a1. 4 times 0 over 3 is 0. I'm going to plug in 4 for a n. Oops, yeah, 4 times 4 over 3 is 16 thirds. And n is 4 minus 0 plus 1, which is 5. So again, I get 5 over 2 times 0 plus 16 over 3, a1 plus a n. That's 5 over 2. That's the answer of that one. Um, times 16 thirds. 2 goes into 16 8 times. 5 times 8 is 40 over 3. We're going to leave our um, fractions improper, and we're not going to put decimals in or we're not going to convert to decimals. So when it's neither, remember, we have to plug in all the numbers. So I have to plug in 3. 3 squared minus 2. Then I have to plug in 4. 4 squared minus 2. 5 squared minus 2. 6 squared minus 2. And 7 squared minus 2. I have to plug them all in, find out what they equal, and then add them up for the neithers. 9 minus 2 is 7. 16 minus 2 is 14. 25 minus 2 is 23. 36 minus 2 is 34, and 49 minus 2 is 47. And when I add that up, we get 7 plus 14 plus 23, 34 plus 47. I get a 125. So the sum for number 15 is 125. Now number 16 is geometric. I'm going to plug in the bottom to find a1. I'm just going to do that as a general rule because if I don't and I was supposed to, then I'm using the wrong a1 and I'm going to get the wrong answer. So this is 1 half to the negative 1 power, which is 2, and 3 times 2 is 6. So my a1 is 6. My r is 1 half. It's always the base of the exponent is my r. And from 5, 0 to 5, 5 minus 0 plus 1 is 6. That's my n. I like the a1, or I'm sorry, yeah, a1 times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r equation, especially when r is a fraction. So I have 6 times 1 minus 1 half to the 6th over 1 minus 1 half. And that's 6 times 1 minus 1 over 64 over 1 half. And that is... 63 over 64 times the 6 and times the reciprocal 2 over 1. So now 2 goes into 64 32 times. And 6 divided by 2 is 3 and 32 divided by 2 is 16. Now we'll do the 3 times the 63. That gives me 189, right? 3 times 60 is 180, 3 times 9 is 9, so 189 over 16. You, got, you have to get good with the cross-canceling and the cross-dividing because it keeps your numbers smaller and it makes sure that your answer is reduced because you're going to get points off if you're not reducing your fractions. Now, number 17 and 18 are some of my favorite my n here from 1 to 6 is 6. 
And so it's one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one. Six times that equals six. So the shortcut is to multiply my rule times my number of terms. So seven to 12, 12 minus seven is five, plus one is six, so n equals six again. And this is just four, six times. Four plus four, plus four, plus four, plus four, plus four. The term doesn't change, it's always four, and so there's six fours, which is 24. Write an equation of the nth term of the sequence, five, eight, 11, four, I see plus three, plus three, plus three, which makes it arithmetic, so d equals three, and my a1 is five. So a n equals a1 plus n minus one times d. My a1 and my n are always variables when I'm writing the rule or the equation. So five plus three n minus three, always make sure you distribute and simplify. Three n plus two equals my a n. Number 20, I see that infinity on top. So the first thing I need to do is check that r is less than the absolute value r is less than one, so one half meets, meets that criteria, so there will be a sum. I need to actually plug in seven to find my a1. So two times one half, seven minus four, two times one half cubed, two times one eighth, which is one fourth. So it's a1 over one minus r. So one fourth divided by one minus one half, which is one fourth divided by one half, half times the reciprocal two over one, I get two fourths, which is one half. That's our infinite sum there. What term has a value of 36? So that means the term is 36, that's my a n, that's of the arithmetic sequence. My a one is negative 20 plus n minus one, I don't know n, so what term means I'm finding n has the value, that's your a n. Negative 20 plus four is negative 16, plus four is negative 12, so my d is four. So 36 equals negative 20 plus four n minus four, that's four n minus 24, add 24, so we get 60 equals four n, and n equals 15. So the 15th term has a value of 36. Number 22, write an equation for the nth term of the arithmetic sequence. a3 is five and a5 is 11. So we had two ways to do this. The first way was using a system of equations. Five equals a1 plus three minus one times d. I don't know a1 or d. So five is equal to a1 plus two d. And you can use the shortcut if your teacher showed you, but if not, um, then I want you to do it this way. Um, 11 equals a1 plus five minus one times d. So 11 equals a1 plus four d. So my n, remember, is the subscript, and my a n is the term the value of that term, and I plug them in. Now I can solve a system if I multiply this by negative one, negative five equals negative a one minus two d, we get six equals two d and d equals three. We don't wanna see guess and check. We don't wanna see you just coming up with the d because you looked at the problems and were able to figure out. You need to show us your calculations. Now that I know d, I can plug it back in to find a1. Five equals a1 plus two times three. Five equals a1 plus six minus six, and a1 equals negative one. So my equation is a n equals negative one plus n minus one times three. Negative one plus three n minus three is three n minus four is my a n. Number 23, find the sum of the first 15 terms of the arithmetic series. 
A1 is 3, D is 4, right? It's plus 4, plus 4. So in order to find the sum, I need A1 and An. We're going to plug it into the, arithm um, the sequence formula to find our An. So we get 3 plus 15 minus 1 times 4. 3 plus 14 times 4. 3 plus 4, uh, 56. An is 59. Now I can find my sum. 15 over 2 times A1, uh, 3 plus 59. 15 over 2 times 62, that's 31, times 15, 465. So the sum of the 15 terms is 465. 24 says find the value of A1. If S8 is 440 and D is 6. So let's look at our equations. We know that S8 means I have the sum. So 440 equals 8 over 2 times A1 plus AN. I don't know either A1 or AN. So let's simplify that. 440 equals 4 times a plus a1 plus a n. Now let's plug in what we know to the a n equation. a n equals a1 plus n, which is 8, minus 1 times 6. So a n equals a1 plus 7 times 6, 42. Then we can plug that into our other equation. 440 equals 4 times a1 plus a a1 plus 42. Now this is where people make mess up. It's 2A1. A1 plus A1 is 2A1 plus 42. It's 4. And I have the option of distributing or dividing by the 4. I like dividing by the 4 because it makes my numbers smaller. So 110 equals 2A1 plus 42 minus the 42. We get 68. 68 equals 2A1, divide by 2, and A1 equals 34. There will be a problem like this on the test, so pay attention to how to do that one. And the last one, number 25, or at least almost the last one on this slide, the number of guppies born in Larry's aquarium is a sequence defined by 2N times N plus 1, where N is the number of months Larry has owned guppies. Find the, first, the total number of guppies born the first five months. So every month, this is the equation, and I'm going to find the total number of guppies. So I have to do A1 is 2 times 1 times 1 plus 1, and that's 2 times 2, which is 4. Then I have to do A2 is 2 times 2 plus 2 plus times 2 plus 1, that's 4 times 3, 12. And A3 is 2 times 3 times 3 plus 1. 6 times 4, 24. A4 is 2 times 4 times 4 plus 1. 8 times 5 is 40. And A5 is 2 times 5. 5 plus 1, that's 10 times 6, which is 60. Now I have to add 60 plus 40, that's 100, plus 24, that's 124, uh, plus the 12, 136 plus the four, 140. And that's the total number of guppies born. Okay, number 26, find the sum of the geometric series. If A1 is negative four, R is negative two, so we're timesing by negative two, times by negative two, and we're given An, 2048. So our sum formula is A1 minus AN times R over the 1 minus R. And we're going to plug in what we know. So because we don't know N, we're going to use this formula. We know AN. Negative 4 minus 2048 times R, which is negative 2, over 1 minus negative 2. So that's negative 4 minus negative. Negative and a negative will be plus 4096 over 3, and so that's 40, 92 over 3, 
and that equals 1364. Numbers 27, find the 50th term. If A1 is 5 and D is 40, again, D is arithmetic. So we have A50 equals 5, your A1 plus N minus 1, N is 50, times D, which is 4. So 5 plus 49 times 4 is 196. And so A50 is 201. So number 28 says find the common ratio. That's a typo. Find the common ratio. To find the common ratio, if you can't just look at it and see what it is, we divide the second term, 2 thirds, divide that by 3 fourths. And how do we divide fractions? We multiply by the reciprocal. 2 thirds times 4 over 3 which is 8 ninths. And that makes sense because if I look at 2 thirds and multiply by 8, I get 16. And when I multiply the bottom by 9, I get 27. So my R is 8 ninths. So if it's not something that's easy to look at, divide the second term by the first term. Number 29, find the term if A1 is 4, AN is 37 and D is 3. It wants us to find N. So we're going to plug 37 in for A N, 4 for A1, N minus 1 times D, which is 3. So 4 plus 3 N minus 3. 3 N plus 1 equals 37. And solve. Subtract 1. 36 equals 3 N. Divide by 3 and N is equal to 12. When you are looking at the video and doing the problems, and number 30 says find the common difference. If A1, that's a Q it looks like, is negative 6, and A12 is 49. So my N is 12, and my AN is going to be 49. Um, it says find the common difference, so that means I'm going to use the AN formula. So 49 equals negative 6 plus 12 minus 1 times D. 49 is negative plus 11D, add 6, 55 equals 11D, and D is 5. And it only asked for D, so I don't have to write a formula.